Haiti right now. A humanitarian crisis in Haiti is reaching new extreme heights, according to a new UNICEF report released today. Nearly three million children, the highest number on record, need support there. Haiti has long faced turmoil, but in recent years, violent gangs have taken control of entire regions, isolating neighborhoods, exacerbating hunger and malnutrition in a place where generational poverty is very much alive and a resurgence of cholera is wreaking havoc. But there are people trying to help, those who call Haiti home and those who don't. Our Matt Rivers traveled to Haiti to see exactly what's unfolding there firsthand. Deep in the heart of Haiti's breadbasket, an area called Artibonite, this small farm grows one of Haiti's most beloved fruits. Thousands of mangoes rot on the ground, flies feasting on what should be sold in a market. But just getting this produce to a market these days is nearly impossible to do safely. Normally, these farmers harvest the crop and send it to the nearby city of Gonaive. From there, it's sent all across the country. But an eruption of gang violence has brought with it the threat of murder and kidnapping. Go to the market, risk your life. Desimis Modelen is one of hundreds of women known as Madan Sara, workers who buy and sell produce, a key part of distributing food throughout the country. After kidnapping, it's a bit of a good twistage for me. You can buy the money, 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 you can buy the money. All of this, I'm obliged to concentrate on the money. I'm obliged to concentrate on the money. At least it's not dirt cookies, man. With markets inaccessible, the UN's World Food Program, or WFP, is trying to help, setting up a small market where they buy produce directly from farmers. You guys are buying from local We're farmers, from that's local, the idea. Straight from local farmers. Thousands of local farmers are able to earn some income, make some money, even during this crisis, thanks to this program. Normally, when there's not so much gang violence, they can just sell at another market here. Right. But because of the violence, they can't sell their that, food there? That's exactly right. The violence has harmed markets. It's a disruptive trade and farmers can no longer this is why africa was in the state it was when 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 when, when the gliders came this is why negroes and negro land was the way it was because think about a hundred years of this without white inf intervention if you ask for a bunch of i mean most some people will tell you well, it was because the all the glider countries conspired to keep haiti down because they were the one black nation or it's like we ain't got no fucking fucking thing to do with what's going on in haiti yeah th this 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 is just after a few years, maybe two years of this. It's been like this since the of, jump. You know, just degeneracy. And with constant white intervention or European intervention or outside intervention, those people in Negroes and Negro land, they were living like this for millennia. That's why you saw human sacrifices and babies being killed because their teeth grew in a certain way and fucking children when a per woman woman dies they bury her children alive with her corpse i, agree, I agree with that wickedness take, but i don't think you should i don't think uh, you know. to fucking you know what i'm saying come about these people are only two years into this shit well, if you want to take Haiti as a whole, they're 200 years into it. But this level of just no functioning government, 
They're two years into this. What about the uh, do what they do, which is bring their goods to market and sell them because they're threatened of being kidnapped and threatened by violence. So even though this market looks incredibly busy, it's actually not as busy as it used to be. It's not as busy as it used to be. Some of the larger shops here have become shuttered. They're closed entirely because it's too dangerous to operate in this context. A lot of this is imported stuff. We've got rice from the U.S., which happens to be cheaper oh, yeah, than the, the local production. So one of the reasons why Haiti's food insecure is that agriculture has been undermined by cheap imports. Right. And it's the same story in other countries. So what will it take to fix this? Look, uh, we need uh, immediate action to help out these farmers, give them a chance. You need investment in, uh, in infrastructure. You need investment in education, but also... And most importantly, you need peace. Without security, you can't fix any of these issues. No peace, no food, no food, no peace. Uh, that's what this place is about. WFP itself has been hit by the violence. Last year, its storehouse completely overrun by hundreds of people who broke in, stealing food from inside while setting the building on fire. What's happening in Gonaive is a mere part of the utter chaos that has enveloped Haiti and specifically its capital of Port-au-Prince. The two cities are 90 miles apart, the same as New York to Philly, but were forced to fly in a UN chopper. From above, you can see the highway that connects those two cities is empty. Under gang control, it's become a highway of death. If you drive it, you could be killed. It's a major reason why Haitian-grown food can't reach the rest of the country. Arrive. Let's not just breeze past that. If you drive on this highway, black gangsters that run this fucking country will kill you. Anybody want to chime in on it? <laughs> Sounds about right. But this happens. I mean, if you drive on the highway in, too. in Oakland, black gangsters will kill you too. Yeah, but not. Like but he that. also said something that you shouldn't let pass you too. He said that cheap U.S. food products are also entering that market. That should never get past you, also, as if Ooh. United States is not a food empire which it is. I'm not saying that the Haitians are not ignorant themselves. Don't but don't think the Europeans are, 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 are saviors in this manner. That's not what it is, because what's happening in Haiti here is the same thing that's happening all across the globe where the U.S. empire tend to land. See what I'm saying? Well, I mean, what are they supposed to do? Like, not send them rice, and then that would be a thing. No, that's not the, the, the point. The is to, The point is to make the American farmer profit in in a, in a poor nation and have the the people that that's developing their own food to collapse their market that's that's the strategy of the united states in these poor nations whether it's in el salvador whether it's in haiti whether mm -hmm. it's in nicaragua or in the pacific this is the strategy i think they collapse a lot of the market when they burn and rape their side of the island <laughs> the land that is and also the farmers are in haiti they can't get the food out because these roads are closed because of those <laughs> thugs yeah i mean you know, but you gotta sure. look at you gotta look at when America has uh when America comes in and 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 has like a a, a strat you know they they have agreements with certain nations you actually have to read the doc the documents like you're not supposed to produce this and that and that American farmers is gonna give you this we'll give you that so when they have trade agreements you should read them and just don't assume that this man is coming here like Tarzan because they're not Tarzan at all. Uh, I nobody. definitely agree that you should read any trade agreements brought to you by the glider man that absolutely you need to read the fine print yeah definitely. you know what i still blame the juice crew personally Facts. okay so oh. if, if 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 those people didn't have that rice that the americans produce in that little bizarre, little street bazaar or whatever that was what would happen to those people in haiti without that food of that the americans sent? I'm not saying that this would become a paradise, but I'm not. I'm saying also that the Tarzan angle needs to needs to be removed from from this equation, as if the European is coming to save or intervene. In. They're not doing none, none of that stuff. That's not what they're doing across the globe. So you don't well, think this is like uh, you don't think this is um, voluntarily given? You think they're like making a big profit from this? Yeah, they make mm -hmm. America makes profit off its off its agriculture all throughout the all throughout the world. Yeah, that's I'm sure that's true. I just don't see like I mean, 
you know, is it wrong to, I, I can see how like over a long time, possibly like a lot of different people doing, you know, having different schemes with stuff up their sleeves, you know, and the, with the guise of trying to help people who are impoverished in Haiti have been really exploiting them instead. Uh, that I can definitely get, but I, I just as a reason for like why Haiti has been in crisis for its entire history, just I think there are other reasons that you know are, are at the that's root one of, it. of them. I'm not, I'm not saying it's it's just the primary reason, but one of them is also that also. Just like you look at Central and South America, when you look at a lot of Central and South America governments were overthrown for simple things like corn. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, like uh, banana wars stuff like that. Right. Mm. Under gang control, it's become a highway of death. If you drive it, you could be killed. It's a major reason why Haitian-grown food can't reach the rest of the country. Arriving in Port-au-Prince, the question is, how has this yeah. happened and why are things so bad? Haiti's history is long and complicated, but focus on the last two years. The country's president, Jovenel Moïse, was assassinated in July 2021. No new elections have been held, meaning right now there's not one elected official in office at any level of government countrywide. Armed groups now fill a power vacuum. The UN says more civilians were killed in Haiti during the first four months of the year. Did you see those tires burning? They, that's the PC version of what they can show you. Watch. Armed groups now fill a power vacuum. The UN said that's the PC version they can show you, but you know what that means. Right? <laughs> that's the... What does it mean? <laughs> if you hear, you know. Yeah, you know. If you know, you know. Yeah. As more civilians were killed in Haiti feeling. during the first four months of the year than in Ukraine. This is an area entirely controlled by armed groups. And because those groups are fighting one another, this is one of the most dangerous areas in all of Haiti. In fact, the only reason we can get in is because one of these gangs has given us permission to enter, but they've told us we're not allowed to film as we enter the neighborhood because they don't want to show their enemies, as they call it, what they're doing. A few seconds later, we're told it's not safe to film. Yeah, we have to put down, the, okay, there, no, let's stop filming. Let's stop filming. Once inside, we go to a school with the WFP and their partner, local NGO, hands together. They go to deliver lunch. A school, an oasis of sorts, in a desert of brutality. Bonjour. 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 A brief moment of peace that can be interrupted at any time. In here. Yup. So this is damage from... It was just rice. There was no... Saw us, no vegetables, just rice. Uh, a stray bullet. Yes. Here, that came in from the street. That's the violence. That's the violence. And there's kids everywhere. Sometimes you, you'll find some bullets on the yard, in the classroom. Right. Yeah, it's kind of freaky. Yeah. It's terrifying. It is. WFP and its partners are feeding roughly 600 kids here, likely their only solid meal of the day. Tiny hands grip big spoons and clean plates of Haitian rice and beans. 12-year-old Michael Francois says the violence has been horrific. He walks us over to his house, right nearby the school. Inside, he and his mom show us the bed that he hides under when the shooting starts. His neighborhood is bleak and not getting better. When the violence gets bad enough, sometimes this neighborhood can be completely cut off from the outside world for weeks at a time. That means no drinking water coming in, no food, no trash pickup. Hundreds of people have died here in this neighborhood. As a So what part of... Um U.S. cheap rice is this, brother? This is not. This is actually not part of the major. This is this is like a shangy town inside the city. The gangs don't even control the entire uh, capital of this of this of this nation. This is this is this is just a mirage, bro. Yeah, but what about like they're getting cholera because they're drinking water out of the same place they shit in? You think that's in the, in the entire nation? All right, so. It fucking widespread epidemic is what they said at the beginning should, of the video. You, if you look at other if you look at other newscasts in regards to the gangs and you look at the foundation of 
of the city, you'll see it looks totally different than what they're presenting to you there on ABC. This is just if you ask, you know, you, you get sometimes you could a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, church ministries that go into places like Haiti, Dominican Republic, and they go there every day. They post every day on YouTube. You can actually see people going to and from every day. You go on YouTube, you see them driving in major streets. And when you look at the map of these these, these countries, you know exactly where there's the problems, where there's the poverty, where there's shiny towns. Just like when I went to China. When I went to China, right in Beijing, they were shiny towns, but they were mostly going uh, south, south, uh, east, and west, not north and south. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what are those uh, what were those ghettos in uh, China like? Well, what are they doing over there? Kind of like this, except a little bit cleaner, more organized, because they're not they're not you know sun 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 sun, sun mine. But you'll see people walking with, uh, you know, underwears and stuff like that. And Chinese people, they fish everywhere in Beijing. Like they'll yeah, go to totally any kind of that. fish. And, mm -hmm. But the what, how the Chinese hide them, they make sure they're east and west. Like, you know, like if you're in Massachusetts, they'll be like on uh, Dorchester. On, they, you, on Dorchester Ave, it's clean. But if you hit the side street, that's where they're at. So Some, North something, North tells me, something tells me that you'd be... A thousand times safer in the Chinese ghetto than in this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. Oh man. As a result of the last few months, what's happening here is the definition of a humanitarian crisis. Filling the void are so-called mud pies, eaten in Haiti for a long time, but never as a primary source of food until now. What's happening here? It's a place where they made the mud pie. It's called mud pie. We call so, it mud pie. So how, how are they made? They use a, the mud, they add up salt and butter. They mix it together. They use like something to make it smooth. No one wants to eat this. Yeah, but if you're starving, you, you get to. At this hospital, a few miles outside of Cité Soleil, mothers bring in their malnourished children. Paulette just brought in her son, Marvin's, for treatment. So a nurse just weighed Marvin's here using this scale. He was about nine kilos, that's roughly 20 pounds. Marvin's is four years old. My son is just shy of 10 months old. They weigh the exact same. Paulette fears she can't care for her son. Today, she's considering giving little Marvin's up for adoption. As a doctor, as a pediatrician, how difficult is it to see this happening in your hospital on a personal level? It affects me because the numbers are rising. The children are really in bad condition. Dr. Florence Sign is the director of pediatrics here. She's never seen things this bad, not even after the earthquake in 2010. Today alone, she's treating a half dozen severe malnutrition cases, often paying out of her own pocket to do so. I would imagine when you became a doctor, that wasn't necessarily what you imagined. This is what I, I keep saying. But once you are in it, you can just look at them this way, knowing I, I got a question. and let them die like this. When there's an earthquake in Haiti, what happens to the other side of the island? Because like that's definitely something I would give them that that's you know kind of a hardship that most other places in the Caribbean and in that area are not having to deal with. But like, is the Dominican Republic damaged as well when that happens? Yes. Sort of except, that, so. except what happened is that the sun ignorance uh, re rears its head whenever uh, these natural re natural disasters happen. Yeah, what happened is that came certain, out of Katrina. certain laws uh, that Dominicans will follow, the Haitians will not follow. For example, you tell the Haitian, look, listen, you cannot build your house six inches past the ground. One idiot will be built his house six inches. The other one will, will build his house 15 inches, two inches, three inches, 18 inches, like Facts, that. Yeah. So when there's an earthquake, Everyone, everyone's house just breaks down. There's no, yeah, in the heating, Dominican no regulation. Republic, yeah, in Dominican Republic, if you say you, you could only build your house two inches off the ground, everyone's going to be two, two inches off the ground. That's the difference between the Hispanic side and the Haitian side. Good point. Mm. I can't let them die. Amidst the hunger and the violence, hundreds of thousands of Haitians have fled abroad, often to the U.S., Many have tried to take advantage of a Biden administration parole program to get in. But if that doesn't work, some get desperate. We're on our way to a boat that's going to take us to an island called Turtle Island just off the coast here. That's where all the migrants that are trying to get to the U.S. are taking off from. They're promoting illegal migration right there. 
arriving mm. here to the island is the first step in and an the people incredibly that's from dangerous that's journey for migrants. America, they've been in jail before. They've killed people before. So what they're doing is they're allowing all the bad seeds of the world to go into the United States. ABC, this is this is this 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 this, this company is wicked. Just like mm. the Cubans, just like the Cubans back then. Wow. I don't know. I, I think there are a lot more actual refugees among the Cubans than, than I mean, I don't know. These are maybe no, clearly refugees. No, yeah, too, I mean, they but... were, yeah, they were fleeing from the communism, right? From Castro. Yeah. He was going to kill the rest. Maybe the difference is, yeah, political persecution versus just trying to get the fuck out of this, off this fucking Sun Island here. The majority yeah. of the Haitian illegal migrants that's coming from the United States, they're not coming from Haiti to the United States at all. They're actually going into South America. They're going to places like Brazil, Peru, Argentina, uh, El Salvador, and then they're go and they live there for years. They get into all sorts of trouble, and then they just simply go into the border. By the time they get to the U.S. border, they take their passports, they throw them on the ground, and they and they claim to be uh, what's this thing called asylums. So this is what's happening all throughout Central and South America. That's the real tea. Wow, so they getting in trouble down in South America. What what does it look like? What trouble are you talking about? They get into robbing them? people, carjacking, uh, you know, stealing, you know, transporting one car from one Hispanic country to another. So this is what you're seeing in North South America from Colombia. You know, Colombians going to Brazil, steal cars, take cars going to Brazil, going to Colombia. So finally, when the governments of these nations cast them, put them in jail for five years, the best thing they're like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the United States. The border's open. And then you have the juice crew who brings in trucks and stuff like that and just drives them to the border. Mm. So now you're having like criminals. This is why whenever you start seeing the news of certain crimes like um, uh, methadone and all that type of stuff being sold in the United States, or you, you hear about gangs going into California, they're breaking into homes. This is what they were doing in Central and South America. Well, what about... What what about those that say that the Mexican cartels are smuggling these Haitians as well? This is all this is all nonsense. There's people that organize all, all from 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 Haitians, from people from Peru, Argentina. There's there's organizations just like they they organize the Black Lives Matter. They do the same thing in South America. They organize them and tell them you got to go here here here. When you get here, there's a bus that's gonna pick you up, get you to the get you by the Rio Grande and stuff like that. And when you get there, take your passport, just throw it on the ground. So, so okay, what about the Venezuelans then? Is that also the Jews' crew? Is that the actual hey, Mexican cartels? It's not Mexi Mexican cartel. The, the only reason why the American government is highlighting the Mexican cartel because the U.S. government eventually is going to go into Mexico for some natural resources. Has nothing to do with them. They are, they're for a fag doing it, though. Right. The, the cartels are literally smuggling people for a lot no, of money. No, but they're not the major players in this game. Are they smuggling okay. Haitians though? Or yeah, they, they they smuggle Haitians. They smuggle everybody. Everything is over there. Everything like you got Chinese nuclear scientists. Yeah, they'll smuggle the fucking Haitians. Chinese too. <laughs> if you if, if hey, look if you have money, they'll smuggle you. Everything. Yeah. Wow. Arriving here to the island is the first step in an incredibly dangerous journey for migrants heading for Florida. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? And this man will help them do it for a price. Activity me fait sous idea. Moi c'est mené mon pour les pères au Cap, Miami, États-Unis. The boat can take up to 100 people, many of whom sail down below. So here below deck, it is incredibly hot. It is very uncomfortable. And if I move to the back here, it's like a fucking slave ship. This is just like a slave ship. It's know? no different, yes. There's no different than what would we do ship. without these intrepid gliders? We were like, we, we would not be seeing this stuff. I'm not getting wow. to no fucking hold in no goddamn Haitian migrant smuggling ship. Imagine the smell down there. The gliders don't have no point. Just how cramped. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, I mean, like, you getting on this boat, man, you a brave motherfucker, man. This space it's is, 50, the captain 50. tells us that. What? 50-50 if, if you get to your destination safe. Yeah, if you're a woman. Could you imagine being a woman on this boat? Below. Yeah. So here below deck, it is incredibly hot. It is very uncomfortable. And if I move to the back here, I can show you just how cramped 
this space is. The captain tells us that at any given time, while the ship is in motion, there's up to 50 people sharing this space, sitting more or less like this. And remember, this journey can last five days or more. Oh, my God. Yo, I, I don't know if this is recent or not, I, but if it is, this they're coming is just in time for the June... They're coming just in time for the Juneteenth festivities. Yeah, this is today, man. This, this. Is oh, they're coming right in time for the party. I just in time. Last everyone grab your gun. Everyone grab a gun. Or more. For many, it's their first time on a boat, and days spent on the open water can take its toll. When people break down mentally, the smuggler tells us what he does. <laughs> With this, yeah, no one would choose to take this kind of journey, but many here see it as their only option. On the island, Jeanette is a would-be migrant, waiting for the smuggler's boat to leave so she can try to go to the U.S. She says she's out of money, staying in this hut with no power or running water. Somebody's going to let her watch their fucking kid when she gets here. Some gullible glider is going to let her watch their kid. Jeanette is traveling with her friend Keisha, who says for her, this journey is about the future. What a grim portrait. Our thanks to Matt Rivers for bringing us that. Hi, everyone. George. That brother is the one who interviewed Lil Wayne uh, back, back then. <laughs> Keep on pushing Lil Wayne to, to hate white people. Oh, really? Hey. Yeah, that hey. brother. Hey, Eric, uh, but you know, now that you mentioned it, I'm very intrigued by the non-spoken agreement between gliders and some people where gliders will take care of some kids and as a result some men will take care of glider queens yeah it's a symbiotic relationship man um yikes man and on that note i'm out of here man peace out man doses peace see you